At the height of the Cold War, after 22 years of antagonism, the United States and China would move towards rapprochement, achieved not by diplomats, but by a game that was not and still is not popular enough to be a sport in the US. I remember the big event when the American ping pong team in Japan for the 31st World T Table Tennis Championship received a surprise invitation from their Chinese counterparts for an all expense paid visit to the People's Republic. I can still visualize the grainy images of the nine member team accompanied by officials and spouses stepping across a tiny railway bridge at Lowu, crossing from Hong Kong into mainland China where no Americans have been allowed entry since the communist takeover in 1949. As I recall, my father shed tears at the thought that we might be able to see our family in China again. Ping pong diplomacy would be the beginning, not the end. The Chinese national table tennis team would arrive almost exactly a year later on a reciprocal tour of the US. By 1972, then National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger would have made a secret visit to China, followed by the even more momentous visit of US President Richard Nixon. The visit that changed the world, as he said, and Beijing would be admitted into the United Nations and take its place on the Security Council, replacing Taiwan. On December 15, 1978, the US and China would establish formal diplomatic relations, paving the way for China's spectacular economic and geopolitical rise. I think it is fair to say that sports diplomacy and people-to-people -people diplomacy not only transformed US-China diplomatic relations, but also launched possibly the most significant realignment of global power and history. We're